Now today we are talking about super reform 2016-17 uh, annual financial year processing class. Um, there are a lot of confusions and misunderstandings around the 16-17 financial year processing as a result of super reform, uh, especially in relation to the transitional CGT relief and the compliance with 1.6 million transfer balance cap. Hopefully my session will clear some of the uh, misconceptions. If you can take away one or two hints and tips from my session, I consider that a win. Uh, it will give us a more motivation to provide better contents and put updates in the near future. CGT relief is one of the most complex areas in the super reform legislation. Uh, what I want to state up front is that it doesn't matter how much class can put in into to automate and simplify this process. It cannot substitute the professional advice from cell municipal and accountants, advisors, administrators such as yourself who has clients best interests at their hearts and clearly understand the rules around it. So I hope no one in the session has one of my favorite support queries uh, in, in, in this area received by a client. Uh, the client was saying that they have a fund that's currently in full pension mode. Um, they want to lodge the 17 tax return as soon as possible to get the refund and they can deal with CGT re relief later. CGT relief is not automatic and um, once the decision is made, they are irrevocable. There's no one set of rules that apply to all funds or even most of the funds. Depending on the fund structure, such as being segregated or not, members' intention in relation to their retirement status, uh, investment profile, whether there are any carry for capital losses, whether they have 1.6 million transfer balance cap issue to deal with, all these different uh, variables play an important role for you to decide whether a fund should take up CGT relief or not. Uh, which CGT relief method is, appro is appropriate here? Uh, if it's proportional method, should a fund defer or not defer the notion on gains? Um, when should they execute the CGT relief event and process the co commutation to comply with the 1.6 million transfer balance cap? When should they obtain a actuary certificate? What other uh, record keeping requirements are requ uh, necessary? Now, um, uh, I'll start with a disclaimer. Um, and, and I also want to apologize in advance. My session is generally quite uh, technical and quite hands-on. So if you're new to class, welcome. Um, and if you're only an advisor purely uh, doing the advice piece, you will find the early part of my presentation will be useful. Uh, when, when I get to the case studies, uh, it's mainly targeted to um, administrators who do daily um, to do daily processing on class. So what will we cover today? Um, we will um, cover what we have delivered recently, um, what's coming soon in the next release. Then I will go through, um, um, I call it the top 10 myths around the CGT relief and end of financial year processing. Then we'll, we will do some case studies uh, based on a proportional fund. Uh, the next case study, three, is on segregated funds. And the last case study will provide two different methods to get exactly 1.6 million pension balance. If time permits, I'll also go to some questions. So to start my presentation, I normally will go through some good news. Um, we have so in the last release that delivered on the 1st September this year, uh, the CGT relief application menu has improved. Now it display um, the gross, gross relief, am relief amount, the discount amount, and the notional amount deferred. So you will have more information available. The unrealized capital gains report has been um, uh, improved. Now I have extra column to track um, the deferred notional gains. And the realized gains report also is being updated um, to track the deferred gains realized if you um, process some uh, disposal after 2017. What's coming up? Um, so update parceling and improve error message handling with unmatched parcels while you're processing CGT relief. 
So um, this is one of the queries received in support areas where you get uh, an unmatched parcel error. It's usually to do with some sort of cost base or quantity adjustment in relation to the, sh uh, in relation to the shares on, on managed funds. And hopefully this button will allow you to basically match parcels without you um, exit the CGT relief event and um, run a peer update. Um, this one, allowing non defer option, you probably already seen it uh, uh, in, the, in the system. So we literally released uh, this um, late last week as a patch. So now you have the ability to, to choose uh, non deferral on CGT relief. Now, um, going through my top 10 misses. So the first one, um, which will get this question fair bit. How is national capital gain amount deferred calculated? So I have a very sim simple example. Uh, 10,000 ANZ shares was purchased during GFC for about $13 a unit. And they were held throughout the pre-commencement period being 9th of November to 30 June. The fund is unsegregated and the pension exemption for the year is 90%. The market value on ANZ um, on 30 June is $28. So the notion of gain is calculated as the following. You've got 28 minus 13 times the number of units, uh, apply one third discount to it, and then times the pension exemption. So uh, it comes out to be exactly $10,000. If you divide it by 10,000 units, you get $1 per unit. So that's the notion of deferred gains um, captured at the parcel level. What happens if say 1,000 units of NZ shares were sold on the 31st, on 31st August 2017. Uh, it was sold for $30 a share um, and the pension exemption has been reduced to 50% uh, for the 18, 2018 financial year. So the normal capital gains calculated as following, 38 minus 28 times $1,000. Noticeably because the CGT relief event actually reset the discount period, uh, the, the capital gain no longer gets discounts, but it's still entitled to the pension exemption uh, factor. So you get uh, 2,000 times by 50%, $1,000. By the same time, the deferred notion of capital gain amount is being realized at one unit, $1 per unit times 1,000 units. So I took it at $2,000. Myth number two, how does uh, capital losses interact with deferred notion of gains? So again, a, a simple example. So for the 16, 17 financial year, you had $150,000 carry for capital losses and the notional deferred capital gains uh, is $100,000 after discount and pension exemption. In the 17, 18 financial year, the fund has the following capital gains realized. So the $90,000 out of capital gain, 100,000 discount gain and 70,000 deferred notional gains. And the fund has pension exemption percentage of 50%. Now, for the 16, 17 financial year, the notional capital gain, if they are chosen to be deferred, there is no interaction with carry for capital losses. However, for the 17, 18 financial year, what I did here is I at least a table, um, basically um, applied the uh, losses in different order. So uh, the first set of examples discounted other gains, and lastly it's deferred. And as you can see, clearly the best optimal result is actually always apply um, the deferred gains first, then other gains, and then discount gains. And, and the seed capital on this is $5,750. Now the reason being that is because deferred gains, once uh, it's chosen deferred, obviously the pension exemption and CGT discounts are already locked in. So they cannot receive further discounts and further pension exemption in the 17, 18 financial year. Whereas other gains, if they realized um, in the 18 year, even though they don't get discounts, they can still get pension exemption. Whereas um, the discount gains, we get both uh, the, the discounts as well as the pension exemption. So it's always optimal to apply in that order. The good thing is class already built the system to handle the loss application me mechanics here. Um, so going forward, it will not be an issue. Um, number three, so we get 
I call this a very generalized uh, statement. Um, a lot of people making those uh, statements saying that for a sale managed super fund that has a very high pension exemption, say it's over 50, 95 pence, 95 percent, it should always uh, it should always take up CGT relief and for administration simplicity, choose non deferral option. Now, that statement is probably true in a lot of cases. However, there are situations this statement will not hold. Here's one good example. A fund with large amount carry for capital losses. Say the fund has um, an investment portfolio with unrealized gains of $1.7 million or discountable. Um, there are no other capital gain or loss event during the 16, 17 financial year. The fund has carried for capital losses during, uh, of half million dollars during GFC. And the fund is unsegregated and the pension exemption for this illustration purposes is 99.99%. Now, and for administration simplicity, the trustee has chosen to not, sorry, chosen not to defer the notion of gains and decide to pay the tax uh, in the 17th financial year. This is how you do the calculation. So 1.7 minus half million, apply once the discount and then times the one minus the pension exemption. So it's the, the national capital gains are only $80. It times by the um, tax rate of 15%. So the capital gain tax is only $12. However, by merely paying that $12 capital gain, you are wiping out the entire amount of carry forward capital losses. Some people place a 10% value on the carry forward capital loss of being a $50,000 tax benefits. So basically you pay $12 uh, tax and then you lose potentially uh, $50,000 tax benefits. Clearly in this scenario, you should not choose the non deferred option. Now, here's a question um, or a miss. Uh, should you choose defer or not defer on national gains? Now, this assessment is purely a financial one, so it does not take into account if members' intention, uh, so for example, whether the fund is leaving your practice, and therefore you need to supply additional information to the new accountant. If the fund is not administered on a system such as a class that handle defer national gains properly, then there will be a lot of paperwork involved. Now, just purely for the number point of view, uh, what I did is I list the key difference between diff different capital items. So you, ha you have your no normal capital gains. Obviously, they cannot be deferred. It's discountable. It can be reduced by ECPI, but it must interact with um, capital losses. Whereas the notion of deferred gain, it's, it's quite um, unique, peculiar. They, they can be deferred. Uh, and once they defer, it does not need to interact uh, with the current or prior year capital losses, uh, at least for the 2017 financial year is concerned. So now here's the proposition. Um, purely from a tax and financial planning point of view, if there's enough capital losses being carried forward or current to fully absorb the notional capital gain amount after CGD discount and pension exemption, then the fund will always be financially better off to defer national gains than not deferring it. Now, using that proposition to apply the calculation in the previous example, you have um, $1.7 million uh, national capital gain and 99% uh, pension exemption. So this formula purely uh, checks the amount of carry, carry for capital losses or current year capital losses. Only if you have you know, more than $113, that small amount potentially can absorb the entire uh, 1.7 million uh, notional capital gains. So obviously this is um, a quick calculation or, or rule of thumb you can use to apply to check uh, on a case by pace scenario. So next one, um, are there any legitimate reasons to take up ca uh, capital losses? So my answer to that question is generally no. Um, the reason is if you do take up reset cost base in, for unrealized uh, losses uh, investments, then firstly the CGT discount period reset. So if the asset is sold in the 17, 18 financial year, then uh, there's no eligibility for CGT discount. The cost base is reset to market value, i.e. being lower, and therefore 
if the capital gain is triggered, um, it will be either higher or, or the capital loss will be lower uh, on a subsequent disposal. Let, let's use a very quick example. Say you had a 10,000 Bellamy shares. It was purchased during its peak, say around $14.95. On 30 June, uh, the share price on Bellamy were, closing price was $6.91. So the deemed capital losses is the difference between the two times by 10,000 units and you've got 80,000 uh, capital losses realized. Now what happened if um, Bellamy shares subsequently the share price recovered? Uh, hypothetically, let's say Blackmore announced uh, a, a cash takeover of Bellamy for $18.91 uh, in 2020 and the fund has um, pension exemption factor of 50%. Now, the capital gain tax is calculated as following and you get $6,000. If it was based on the original cost base of the shares, the capital gain is only one third, uh, 2000 Now, I do have one exception. So that exception is basically, um, there are cases where you want to um, crystallize capital losses. And the reason is um, some of the losses uh, shares are, you know, almost worthless, but normally you need a loss declaration letter from the administrators or, or liquidators before you can crystallize capital losses. By having the CG2 relief event, potentially you can take advantage of that to have the losses to be crystallized before getting the official letters. So please, do, so example I can think of, if you had shares in Dick Smith shares recently, or Channel 10 shares, um, so check delist.com.au and uh, SX website also has good information about delist companies in the last six months. Myth number six. Um, again, this is a very generalized statement. So transition switch relief is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Therefore, for every funds that with pension interest, they should take advantage of it. Well, it is true in a lot of cases, but there are many situations where the CG2 relief is not available to the fund. Or uh, where be, there will be, there will also be situations where it's not advantageous for the fund to take up CG2 relief. So obviously I have some common examples. For example, the fund's winding up during the 16, 17 financial year. All the assets are most likely will be sold in that year. Therefore, they're not eligible for CG2 relief. If the pension balance, uh, the pension is not a trust and it's got under 1.6 million, Again, you're not entitled to CG2 relief. Um, a fund is moving from a low ECPI percentage environment to a high ECPI percentage, then um, locking notion of gains, whether it's deferred or not. The fund, uh, when the fund has a low ECPI, it means there are more tax to be paid to the ATO. One uh, example I can give is, um, say, a, a TRIS fund, member with a million dollars, half, uh, half millions in pension, half millions in accumulation and a member has the intention to retire in three months time after 30 June, then clearly it's not his or her best interest to, to take up CGT relief, knowing that in three months time, the entire fund is, is gonna be in retirement, um, retirement phase and therefore everything will be tax exempt, including capital gains. Now, there's one important um, exceptions or I call it um, legislation defect. So. This is when the fund used a proportional method as that uh, 9th of November, but in inverted converts to a segregated fund, um, usually being 100% uh, on or before 30 June. So um, the reason that's the case is under the criteria for CG2 relief, for a fund that used segregated method, the assets at the start of the pre-commencement period the CGT asset must be a segregated current pension asset. Clearly in this scenario, it will not apply. If they want to use, use um, proportional method, the assets um, has, has to be not a segregated current pension asset or segregated non-current pension asset. Again, this scenario does not apply. Now, the common example if this happened is if there are two member funds, member one's entirely in pension phase, Member two currently is in accumulation phase at the start um, of the financial year, 1st July 2016. Sometime after 9th of November 2016, the second member used his or her um, accumulation balance to, to start 
uh, a pension and, and basically convert the whole fund to a 100% pension fund, then that particular scenario, the fund is not eligible to get CGT relief. Had a member leave $1 uh, in the accumulation interest, then they're entitled to it. So one, we, so Clark was, class was involved in the initial consultation with, with the ATO about this and uh, with other industry bodies, we would try to lobby the Treasury to change the law to, to we believe that's unfair, um, but unfortunately, um, I still believe the legislation is quite rushed um, and, and that's why we're still left with this defect. Just be mindful of this. Number seven. Um, so we'll get a lot of questions about proportional versus segregated method. So it is quite complex. So one of the statements I want to stay up front is that for segregated funds, they have a choice to continue to use segregated method or adopt proportional method purely for the purpose of calculating exempt current pension income. It does not change the method for CGT relief purposes. Therefore, if funds that, that they are in segregated mode, um, the capital gain losses will always be fully disregarded should they, should, should they choose CGT relief. Um, what I did here is I basically compared the proportional method versus segregated method, uh, list the eligibility criteria. Um, what I want to highlight here is one is the CGT timing. For proportional method, it's always 30 June 2017. Uh, for segregated method, you can choose um, uh, a, a cessation time or cessation date. So that's the that's the time during the pre-commencement period when the asset ceases to be segregated current pension asset. Practically, what that means is if you either physically move some assets that's supporting the um, segregated to support the pension balance out of the current pension um, asset pool to um, segregate a non-current pension as a pool, or you choose a day saying, I want to switch that to proportional method, then that's your succession time. Now, given succession time can happen um, sometime between 9th of November to 30 June, if you choose um, earlier than 30 June, then make sure uh, you have evaluation in place, particularly for unlisted investments such as property. I will show an example later in my case studies. And the key difference between the two, uh, the, or the tax treatments particularly, is under proportional method, you will always end up with a notional uh, capital gain. Uh, you can choose to defer or not defer. Uh, uh, if you choose defer, they are required a parcel level. Whereas um, for, for funds choosing segregated method, the entire, um, defer, uh, entire capital gain losses are disregarded. Therefore, you don't have the deferral um, uh, issue to deal with. Now, what I did here is, this is some of the frequently asked questions that we receive about the proportional method versus segregated method. So I want to quickly go, go through. One is, can you have one, one, more than one succession time uh, under segregated method? The answer is yes, if you're using, or if the fund continue to use the segregated method. Um, no, if the fund changes um, from a segregated method, method to a proportional method, then all assets are basically reset, um, um, uh, basically moved from segregated to um, to um, non-segregated environment. Therefore, um, you only have one day. Now, what happens if a 100% pension fund moves to proportional method prior to 1st July? Are there any restrictions on the value of the assets um, the CGT relief can apply to? So we have received confirmation from ATO. Basically, if the fund chooses to use um, uh, switching from segregated to proportional method, potentially all the assets um, will cease to be segregated current pension assets, and therefore they are potentially uh, eligible for CGT relief. The, the law currently does not restrict, restrict CGT relief to a particular asset or particular value. Now. Based on the uh, answer on question number two, the next question is, does the amount of commutation to comply with 1.6 million transfer balance cap need to be matched with the amount of CGD assets supporting 
the CGT relief or vice versa? Um, the answer is no, um, for the same reason as in question two. However, I do want to qualify one thing is that if, if the funds uh, continue to use segregated method, only the assets that are moving out of the segregated current pension asset pool to segregated non-current non -current, non -current pension asset pool is eligible for CGT relief. Whereas by simply adopting a proportional method, potentially allow all assets to be eligible for CGT relief and reset the cost base. Now, how do we determine whether a sale municipal fund is a segregated fund in class? So the easiest way is actually go to um, a member council. There's a filter uh, for segregated. The segregated filter is, is built on the following conditions. One is the fund currently has a fund policy with pension exemption set as 100%. Then the system will treat that as a segregated fund. Or there are pool of assets segregated specifically to support one or more pension accounts uh, in the system. Now. The next question, if a fund has taken to using a uh, segregated method, um, oh, sorry, if the fund's effectively 100% pension fund receives a contribution during um, prior to 1st July 2017, how will CG2 relief apply? Um, so again, I think ATO has answered these questions. Basically, uh, if they received a contribution and they did not uh, provide a, well, um, produce a minute to say the fund they have segregated that uh, contribution money into uh, uh, another account. Then effectively, by for fund that's in 100% mode, receive a contribution. Uh, it, it's it's trigger the uh, uh, cessation time, and therefore um, CGT relief may be available on that day. If they document um, document this contribution and keep that segregated potentially they can delay the succession time to later um, when, they, when they want to uh, switch. Now, does the day of commutation need to be the same day as succession time for segregated funds? Um, there's a paper produced by the SMS of Associations. Um, I think the title of the paper is called the um, City Relief and a Segregated Method. So. Um, they, they basically conclude that triggering a succession time before 30 June does not force members to have to roll back their pension account to under 1.6 million transfer balance cap uh, on that day. So they can delay that to a later date. Uh, as long as it's before 30 June 2017, it, it's fine. Um, this, the, the, the Korean blog article also stated the exact same information based on an answer provided by um, uh, ATO staff. Now, we get this question uh, a fair bit as well. So obviously just to do with 100% pension fund, uh, switching to proportional method, should the fund obtain a true certificate or not? So what I did here is I copied the answer from, from the ATO, so this is the official answer. To summarize for you is that um, if the fund has some income um, in relation to the period that which is switching from a segregated to proportional. And basically they say you need to do a cost be benefit analysis. Uh, and if it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's purely for a tax, um, tax calculation point of view. And, and uh, if it's uh, basically the benefit outweighs the cost, then you should get a, a certificate. So the, the follow on question is, um, in practice, most actuary providers, when they give you a certificate, they always give you a certificate for the entire financial year. Well, at least for the 2017 financial year is concerned, that's been the case. Um, Would that certificate sufficient um, for, for the funds that changing from 100% pension fund um, and then for a, a short period of time, perhaps one day, to a proportional method? The answer to that question uh, is yes. Um, provide the actual certificate covers the period in which you're doing the succession time and you're doing the CGT relief, uh, sorry, and, and the commutation, then uh, ATO will not take any compliance measures against the calculation of the ECPI. Um, now, so what, that, what does that mean? So really the consideration 
to decide whether you should obtain a church certificate or not is based on the following. So if you're switching from a proportion, segregated fund to proportional method and um, any income received during the relevant period. So usually it's 30 June. Then my belief is that you should always obtain a true certificate. Even if the cost of the certificate outweighs the income, I say if you receive $50 interest on 30 June, and most certificates these days cost you about $100 plus. Um, or some actual provider may still return a percentage as 100%. My argument to that is, um, it's, it's like buying a peace of mind. Um, in, in case the fund ever gets audited by ATO, you can justify your calculation to say that that 100% or 99.95% is actually produced by a third party. Um, independent of myself and therefore I uh, place reliance on that calculation. Um, think about in a lot of funds when they take up CGD relief, the the gains or the you know the, the unrealized gains value we often see they are in the magnitude of you know millions of dollars. The actual certificate costs we're talking about you know usually uh, in a slightly above of a hundred dollars. So um, and therefore, it is really paying a small price to buy a peace of mind. Now, we'll get this question a fair bit. Um, again, it's um, both in the legislation and the uh, law companion guide talks about the CG relief prescribed form. So, so what is the prescribed form? It's actually the 2017 capital gain tax of CGT schedule. Um, there are two new fields on the schedule. One is, have you chosen to apply transitional CG relief? For the fund, yes or no. Uh, if you say yes, then the next question is um, please recording the amount of notional capital gain amount deferred. So uh, I'm not sure about you. I was actually quite underwhelmed in relation to what's required to be reported to the ATO. Despite the complexity, we are only reporting absolute minimum information to the ATO. So what we class decide to do is we we need to make sure um, there are enough record keeping documents to support uh, potentially the calculation of the capital gain um, in subsequent period. So we we'll produce the CGT relief application minute or resolution. So this document uh, explain your intention to claim the CGT relief using which method, uh, the amounts you're seeking for relief, as well as uh, if you use the proportional method, what the actual percentage is locked in. Obviously, the CGD schedule for 17 financial year has been um, improved and those uh, questions and, and the amount will be updated automatically. The unrealized gains report, as I suggested earlier, um, now tracks the um, notional deferred capital gain at parcel level, so effectively become a detailed uh, uh, asset register for, for CGD relief information. For the 17, 18 financial year beyond, so um, the statement of tax income has been improved. We have extra fuel called deferred capital gain realized. If we sell some shares that has deferred capital gain parcels, um, then that information will be re reflected in the statement of, of taxable income report. Uh, 2000, and we also received confirmation from ITL um, that um, the 1718 CT schedule will be updated. Um, to allow uh, you to calculate the net capital gain, taking into account of deferred capital gain that's subsequently realized in part or in full. Uh, obviously, the realized capital gains report has been improved um, to show the, uh, the, the breakdown of the national deferred gains and that's realized. Now, um, the last miss. Um, so, Knowing that you have to do the CGT relief, uh, you have to do, so for the fund has pension balance over 1.6 million, you have to do the commutation. And a lot of funds, you probably need to get a choice certificate. So uh, which step should I do first? So here I actually list, I call five hints and tips in this area. So for proportional funds, um, given the, the final uh, official actuarial certificate locks in the calculation for different gain purposes. Therefore, for proportional funds, 
the CGT relief should be the last processing step before you're running the final peer update and tax finalization. For segregated funds, switching to proportional method, um, it's, it's actually the opposite. Um, for segregated fund, um, it's important that you process the CGT relief event when the fund is in segregated mode, uh, i.e. the fund has uh, temporarily has an actual percentage of 100% or there are assets um, uh, properly segregated to support pension accounts. Uh, then when you do CG relief, uh, when the fund was in 100% pension mode or segregated mode, then the capital gain and losses are dis disregarded. Now currently class and, and most other software house does not support what we call a multiple fund policies in a single financial year. So it is very important that both for proportional funds and segregated funds switching from proportional method, or switching to proportional method. When you run the final period update, the fund policy is updated with the official actual percentage and backdated from 1st July. Now, um, there are um, some questions we received. People want to do the commentation after 30 June period update, but the system currently triggers that as a modified event. Is that an issue? So. Provider commutation is done such that um, it's, it's commutation back to accumulation rather than a lump sum payment. Then um, it can perform after 30 June period update uh, because it does not have any profit and loss um, implications. And all it does is changing a pension balance to, to, to an accumulation balance. Um, as, as I already suggested for segregated funds, um, trigger a succession time before 30 June, you do not need to do the commutation on the same day. Uh, what that means is um, for funds that, that that's segregated, it's probably in their best interest to delay the commutation as late as possible. Uh, most likely will be 30 June. Uh, for two things, one is maximize the exempt current pension income calculation. Um, should the fund continue to use segregated method, or if they switch into proportional method, then the uh, ECPR percentage is also maximized. Now, the next bit, I'm actually going through some case studies. Um, so I'll be switch, switching to the class application. Uh, just bear with me. Okay. Um, the first case study, is based on um, the uh, Guardian's Notes 2017 slash 6, um, page 7. I believe it's a TRIS example. Um, so we have um, Adam and Alice Smith and Smith Family uh, Fund. Adam is 60 years old and semi retired, has 2 million in TRIS. Alice is 57. She's got 800,000 in TRIS, 700 in accumulation. So altogether, fund was 3.5 million um, and 2.5 is increased. If you do that, um, division is roughly 80%. Uh, the fund is supported by um, cash of $200,000. Uh, unless um, a managed funds worth $2 million and a property worth um, 1.5. Sorry, uh, the the managed funds currently worth $1.8 million, so altogether 3.5. Fund is not segregated and they hold all the investments throughout the pre commencement period. So to process this, um, so noticely uh, one of the members has balanced over $2 million, but because it's increased, they don't actually need to do uh, commutations, unlike um, normal retirement phase income stream fund. So what you need to do is, it's quite straightforward. Um, now, before I um, go further with my case studies, I do want to claim that all the case studies, um, the all the transaction has been processed up to date, except the CGT relief, the commutation if required, a true certificate and the final period update process. So it's recommended that those, those um, steps should be left uh, absolutely the last few that you need to do for the financial year. What that means is um, if you have income expense, pension drawdowns, um, corporations, shares um, investment buy and sell, um, and tax statements, 
all these should be processed before doing this. Okay, let's just quickly select. So um, before we run period update, it's good to check um, the fund policy being to see whether it's segregated or not. So this one's got pension exemption of 80%. So it's unsegregated. So what you need to do is run a period update to end of financial year. Um, so this is a typical trust fund. Close that. Uh, then request that career certificate. Now, um, normally I, I will refresh this screen. You will see the fund policy will be automatically updated with the, the received actual percentage, which is the interim one, 79. Now, once you have that true percentage, uh, you, can ha you can go ahead to do the CGT relief. And because it's a proportional fund, you have to do that 30 June 2017. So the fund has a property and managed funds and you can drill down at parcel level but there's only one parcel here. Uh, tick all the investment, click submit. So you get a warning, um, it's, it's an event that happened with an existing peer update. So what that means is uh, you need to rerun peer updates. So roll back, new, and um, see the percentage is being updated with the uh, true percentage. Click process. Click finalize tax. Um, so. What we're going to do next is actually check a couple of reports. So one is the um, CGT relief um, application minute or resolution. So you can um, tick whether it's a minute or resolution. Let's do a resolution. So it says this fund is using a proportional method and this is the actual percentage used. Um, what we did is we actually um, changed the city relief information to a schedule and and now and you have an option to defer or not defer. So if you deferred, this is the gain. Okay. Um, so it's about 93,000. The next report, uh, we're going to run the CGT schedule to have a look at the information. Again, uh, you will see the um, the question, have you applied transition CGT relief for the fund? Yes, and this is different notion of gains. That number should agree with the amount in the schedule, uh, in the relief minute. Uh, then if we run unrealized gains report. So it will show you um, the deferred gains uh, in relation to property as well as the managed funds here. Okay, so that's case study number one. Case study number two is basically on the same set of facts as case study number one. The only difference is that the member Adam is being slightly older. He's over 65. Therefore, his his uh, well previous trees now um, now it's a full account based pension, and it's over two million dollars. Therefore, he has to deal with the 1.6 million transfer balance cap issue. So the processing step is the following. So 
again, we run a peer update. Now, the reason we run a peer update to the 29th rather than 30th is that we're actually going to do the commutation on the 30th, so we won't know the exact balance. Although, in some scenario, you can do it on 30 June. I will go through um, this, this, um, the other scenario later in the case study number four. So you run a peer update to 29, so then you can commute the pension back um, through the bulk pension commutation. You select um, Adam. Uh, so I'm doing on the 30 June. It's back to accumulation. So his balance is currently uh, 2.145. So let me just copy this number, paste here. And I subtract 1.6 million, so that's 545. Uh, you can choose what allocation order here. So obviously the most uh, sensible one would be the low to high tax-free calculate. And if you sort by the tax-free percentage, you can see the pension with about 200,000 is fully commuted. The one with 20% uh, is partially commuted. The one with 100% pension exemption, uh, tax-free percentage, sorry, is not touched. So submit that event. Then you run a, run a peer update to end of financial year. So what we need to do is actually obtain the official actual percentage. So let's go ahead and do that. So the fund originally had a 80% uh, pension exemption. Um, to begin with. Now if we go to check the fund policies now, you'll notice it's updated to, to uh, 79.934. So if um, it means you have obtained a new percentage, you can go ahead to do the CGT relief now. Update it June. This time I will show you um, the, the, the non-deferral option or uh, the non-deferral. So defer capital gain, no. Again, you can pick particular investments or do all of them. You get a warning about it's a modified event because you've got an existing peer update. Uh, so let's just rerun peer update. back. New. Process. And then you finalize tax. Now, in my example, if we go check, check member balance, so this is, there's a couple of ways you can go to the live reports to check, um, but because this member has got uh, more than one pension account, so I'm going to member consoles to check his balance. So I'm looking at his 1617. So he's got 1.6. The reason he's got 1.6 million is that the two investment he's got uh, had a valuation already uh, in place uh, on the 29th, um, therefore. There's no extra earnings supply to it, but in most scenario, uh, you will not get to exactly 1.6. Hence, the case study four will address that problem. Now, I do want to show you a couple of reports. So one is the CGT relief application minute. So. This time, if you remember, I actually choose not defer, so 
hopefully the mini will show that information. So it is still in this proportional mass and this is their true percentage. Um, but they are realized, so they are showing as notional gain amount under re recognized in the FY1617 financial year column. And the other thing I want to show you um, is the statement of taxable income report. Basically, this one shows um, the detailed calculation. Okay, so this is your um, the property has got unrealized gains of half million, and the managed funds um, two hundred thousand. And you get one third discount. So the gross or the net capital gain is four hundred sixty six thousand. But down the bottom, you also get the pension exemption factor. So nearly um, eighty percent or seventy nine point something percent is, is exempt. So um, the the rough capital gain on this is ninety three thousand there about. Then you got your fifteen percent tax rate applied to it. Okay, let's move to case study number three. So number three is actually, again, based on um, guidance notes 2017 slash six, page five, I think the example number two. So you've got um, Barry and Betty Jones, Jones Family Super Fund. Betty, she's 64 years old. Uh, she's got $2 million in uh, retirement phase. And Barry is, is 56, not retired. It's got $1 million in accumulation. The fund is actually a segregated fund. Um, it's supported by a property um, with cost base of 1.5, a market value of $2 million. Um, a share portfolio of $1 million is purely segregated to support Barry's accumulation interest. And the fund held the assets throughout the pre-commencement period. Now, um, to, let's go to this example. So to, to identify whether the fund is uh, segregated or not, so you can go to member council. I'll just close the other one. So there is um, a filter, segregated. So if we show uh, accounts there, that means the fund has segregation in place. The other way you can check is to make sure is you go, if you go to fund policies, uh, the pension exemption method is segregated and the other thing is you have to make sure the asset pool also reflect that segregation. Uh, so default pension pool is set up and supporting for, for pension accounts for Betty. Okay. Now let's, now in this example they actually um, doing CGT relief on the 20th of uh, May 2017 and and this example they're also doing the commutation on that day. Now normally as I suggested earlier that commutation and situ relief not necessarily need to be done on the same day. To ma maximize pension exemption you probably want to defer, um, defer that until towards the end of financial year, the commutation piece. But however this is purely follow strictly the, the ATO example and, and that's why we're doing uh, the peer update first on the 19th of May. Okay, the next thing you do is the um, uh, bulk pension commutation. So we want to Do that for Betty on the 20th of May. Uh, again, back to accumulation. So the amount to commute. So in this example, um, because I'm doing commutation quite early compared to 30 June financial year, uh, more than a month earlier. So uh, in order to get to um, 1.6, I need to do 940,000, uh, low to high. 
Sorry, I need to do 930,000. You will get exactly. But to be safe, because there are potential earnings apply from uh, 21st of May to end of financial year, I want to do a bit more than um, uh, a bit more than 930 to create the buffer. Uh, then just check they are community right pension accounts. Uh, the one with lowest tax, uh, zero tax free percentage is 40 commuter. Submit that. Now, you don't need to add true certificate now. You can go ahead with CGT relief because you are using uh, a segregated method. So I'm doing it on the 20th of May 2017. I only have uh, the property asset that's segregated, um, or being the segregated current pension assets entitled to get CGT relief. Submit that. Okay. Now, because the fund is switching from segregated mode to proportional mode to calculate ECPI, it's important that you update fund policy. to say asset segregate for pe pension, no. Okay, um, then you can do the peer update. So the peer update is from um, 20th of May to end of financial year process. This is an interim peer update um, in order to get a true certificate. So you need to request a true certificate. Request. Okay, uh, let me just refresh that. Hopefully you've got the new percentage, 63.806. So let's uh, redo the peer update. Roll back. New. Process. and finalize tax. Now, um, what I want to do is actually check a member's balance. Uh, so it's some of those two for her pension account. So there's another step total. Let's go to member console. Uh, as I said, because commutations happen, uh, you know, one mo month earlier than it's required, there's no way you will get exactly $1.6 million. Um, so you've got her pension account. That's 1.59. Now, um, if you do happen to have one point, over 1 1.6, uh, it's, it's, uh, sometimes you do require another commutation on 30 June. Uh, if it's below, you may consider to start another pension with. Now, I do want to show you a couple of reports for this fund. Uh, CGT Relief Minute. Preview. So this minute what document that the method that actually applied in situ relief is segregated method here and the the notional deferred the notional amount deferred is, is zero um, basically the gains are completely disregarded now if you run the CGT schedule hopefully it will reflect the same same information so the transitional CGT relief questions answered but the amount Capital gain deferred is zero. 
Okay, um, the last case study, um, basically, it's based, there are two methods to get exactly 1.6 million. The case study is very similar to, um, to case study number three, except the pension balance is a lot higher. Um, it's got $5.5 million dollars, uh, in pension. Um, Betty has $4.5 million and Barry's got $1 million in pension. And the fund has a property worth five, $4 million, share portfolio one point four, and cash of 100000 The fund is effectively 100% pension fund. When you have 100% pension fund, it's considered as a segregated method. Uh, it, it choose to switch the proportional method on 30 June 2017 to maximize both for city relief purposes, uh, as well as the exam current pension income. On 30 June 2017, um, the fund is to commute Betty's pension to down to below 1.6 to comply with the 1.6 million transfer. Uh, the, the two methods that I'm about to uh, go through with you is basically based on two, two school thoughts on that true certificate process. Some believe a commutation um, on 30 June is a beginning of the day commutation. Therefore, if there are any earnings on 30 June, that true certificate should be reflected to calculate ECPI. So, in other words, you, you will never get 100% pension exemption if there's an accumulation interest during the financial year, even just for one day, i.e. 30 June 2017. Others, on the other hand, believe a commutation on 30 June was an end of day commutation. Therefore, the fund is effectively retaining its 100% pension exemption. So these two schools, school of thoughts basically led to different methods in my case study to uh, effectively address the 1.6 million problem. So let's go through the first one. Um, so again, the first thing I normally go check is the fund policies um, to make sure. Uh, it's set a hundred percent, so that's good. So I'll just close the other funds to avoid confusions. Now, because it's effectively a segregated fund, you want to do the CGG relief first. Uh, so you do the CGG relief application. And I'm doing it on 30 June 2017. I'll take all investments. You can do a parcel level. Um, and there's a, a customer holding account, so I'm putting uh, an amount, and uh, the, the discount against and $10,000. Submit that. That's it. Um, the city relief effectively locks in. Um, the locks in when the fund is 100% pension mode. So all the capital gain losses will be disregarded. Now, um, we run a peer update to the 29th. Then we're doing the uh, pension commutation. This is Betty. We're doing it on the 30th of June. Payment to accumulation. So that's her pension balance. So I'll just copy this number. And to commute, this is the number, low to high. So you get exactly 1.6 million. Um, all other pension accounts is fully commuted except the last one. Okay, then we run a peer update to the end of financial year. Because it was switching to proportional method, and there's some income on the last day of financial year, I'm going to go ahead to click and get a certificate. Get a certificate. So 
So just check whether you have received a new percentage. In this case, I've got 99.856. Uh, noticeably, it's not 100%. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rerun peer update to pick up the, the official percentage. You only need to roll back the, the last peer update and the system is smart enough to make all the necessary adjustments to calculate for your CPI purposes. Process. And this first method actually require you to make an, a benefit adjustment on the last peer update. Now, see the hyperlink here? Once you click edit, you can actually adjust all the, um, all the numbers. So what we want is make sure there's no extra earnings post on the last day to the Betty's pension account. So reduce that to zero. And this number, everything else go to her accumulation. So one, 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 five. 0.73. As long as the total, um, the current allocation agrees the amount to be allocated, then uh, the system will let you to save that change. Okay, um, then you go finalize tax. So what I want to show you is the um, members balance. Because you only got one pension account, you can, uh, and the rest in accumulation, you can see that's exactly 1.6 million. So that's method one. Um, method one is, in my view, is more conservative method of doing this, but obviously uh, it's quite involved. Um, let's do method two. So. As I said, method two is basically an assumption that the actuary uh, certificate provider ignores the commutation happened on the last day of financial year, being 30 June. Therefore, if actuary don't even care, why should you su su submit a payload that includes that final commutation? What you can do is do the commutation after 30 June period update. So that's the fund is exactly the same as um, the previous one, except um, and the processing steps. So again, I will do the um, CGT relief first. That step is the same as before. And I put 10,000 here. The next step, um, you do the period update to the end of financial year. And when the fund is hundred percent. Then you do the commutation after the thirty June period update. So it was Betty, you are doing 30 June 17. So you copy the balance here, paste here, and subtract 1.6, so it's 3.2. Low to high, calculate. Uh, again, the one with 100% tax free is the one that still got some balance in it. So 1.6 to be exact. So yes, you got warning about modify events, but it, it is uh, it is fine. And go to Betty's pension account. It's 1.6 million. So that's. That's the end of my presentations. Um, uh, sorry for uh, a bit delay <laughs> in delivering those, those contents. They are quite involved. Um, now I'm opening the floor for a few questions if you have.